for teaching juggling is a juggling bean bag. You could think of it as a squishy juggling ball. One thing that's really nice about it is when you drop it, it usually kind of squishes to the floor and doesn't roll very far. So easy to pick up and keep going. If you don't have this kind of ball available at home, it's possible to make something very similar inexpensively. These are made from balloons and rice. Here's how. Let's go over the materials you'll need to gather for this project. Three balloons for each ball that you want to make. And I'm using a 12 or 11 inch balloon. I was able to buy these individually at my local toy store. These are gonna make a medium small size ball. You could use a different size balloon with these same instructions, but you're probably going to want to scale up your filling amount proportionally if you do that. You're also going to need some tape, a pair of scissors, a way to measure a half cup of filling for each ball, a small funnel, and a dry, empty bottle that can hold each portion of filling before it's loaded into the ball. And lastly, some kind of filling. I'm using rice because that's what I have ready to go in the house. You could also use sand for a bit firmer ball or bird seed, as long as it's the kind with smaller seeds that would be less likely to poke through the, the balloon. Our first step is to get a half cup of filling measured out and funnel that into your bottle. Once your loading bottle is ready, You're going to take a balloon and blow it up most of the way. Then stretch that neck a little and pinch it here so you don't lose all your air. I'm going to try to stretch the bottom lip of the balloon around the lip of the bottle. so I can get a connection there. This might take a few tries if you haven't done this sort of thing before. You wanna just kind of have this part folded while you work to get that on there secure. Once it feels secure, you can tip the bottle and get that filling into the balloon. Once it's all in there, you want to get the balloon off of the bottle and let the air out. Leaving you with a balloon full of rice. From here, cut off the top half of the neck. Now we're going to take what's left of the neck of this balloon and fold it down and then we're going to tape this down. Once your first balloon is taped, it's time to cut the second two. For these, we're going to cut a little more on the inside, like once the neck starts to spread out.
The second and third balloons are really just extra layers to protect and make the ball last longer. So to keep the openings as far away from each other as possible, I'm gonna start this one on the side with the tape. And just stretch it out over the ball. That leaves me with a ball like this. And I can add this final layer by stretching out this one and starting here by covering this opening. And now we have a ball ready for action. A fun thing to do with this kind of ball is balancing on the top of the head. which can be very difficult with a round ball. But if you squish that ball just a little bit towards the head, it gets a lot more accessible to balance. And if it's too hard for you, you can always try to squish it more. The more squished down the ball is, the easier to balance. So you can sort of choose your own difficulty for this. And to get a real strong balance, you want to try to line your body up underneath the weight of that ball up there. Feel the weight of it and center yourself under it. And once you get a feel for it and it's kind of steady, you might try moving around a little. Or even really spinning. or something like standing on one foot or even standing on one foot with the eyes closed. And the possibilities are endless. Basically anything you know how to do, you can try to do it while you have a ball on top of your head <laughs> and see if you have the skill solid enough that the ball won't fall off. Here's a three ball pattern to try. You're going to hold a ball in each hand between pointer and thumb. And then your third ball will scrunch against the palm with these fingers. I'm gonna leave some space in my one ball hand here to do that same kind of scrunch in a catch coming up. First throw is gonna come out of the two ball hand over to that space. Now I've switched which hand has two. With my new one ball hand, I'm gonna grasp it throw it up and down, and then reposition to thumb and pointer. I'm now in position to repeat the steps from the other side. So from this outside set of fingers, I'm gonna throw over to the empty spot here, scrunch it down, and then grasp this and throw it up and down, and position it here. Now I have the same opening, the same setup that I started with, and I'm gonna just repeat, and I'll show you what it looks like as it can start to speed up.